It can be said that menuti, or the strike to the head, is the most fundamental technique in kendo. But even some of the highest level masters are still working on refining this technique. My name's Andy Fisher, and today on The Kendo Show, we're gonna be looking at it at three separate levels. Hi, welcome to the Kendo Show. Today we're here in Shubukan, courtesy of Fukuoka University of Education. Absolutely beautiful dojo, and I'm so happy to be bringing you an episode of the Kendo Show from this beautiful place. And I'm here with my friend Max, Max Davies. Max has been on the uh, British team with me several times. We've been in lots of uh, tournaments and events together. Uh, so I'm very happy as well to have him helping me uh, demonstrate some of these techniques to you in the Kendo Show. Um, I'm afraid. We have only got one microphone, so he's not mic'd up, so uh, he's a bit of a mute for a bit, but uh, <laughs> once he gets his stuff on, he'll be shouting away like the rest of us. So thank you very much for joining us, and we're going to look at today, we're going to talk about menuchi. We're going to talk about how to hit men in three different ways for different levels of kendoka. We're going to look at a basic way of hitting, we're going to look at an intermediate way of hitting men, and we're going to look at a more advanced way as well. So let's get right to it. So the first type of menuchi we're going to look at is a very basic type of uh, attack. We're going to look at a basic large swing with the shinai, and we're going to be using suriyashi with the footwork. Okay? So we're going to start from our kamae, okay? and we're going to start at a far distance from our opponent. Okay? So you can see there's a good distance between myself and Max. And from here, in making sure that our kamae is correct, we're going to start with a kakegoe, or a shout, okay? A kind of kiai. Yeah, from here, ya! We're going to say ya like this, okay? And then we're going to step forward, pushing with the left leg first, into our attacking distance. This is called issoku itto no mae. Okay, this means one step, one cut distance, okay? So from this far distance, I'm going to step into issoku itto no mae, okay? And from here, we're going to raise the shinai in a large arc above our head as we push out our right foot again, okay, towards our opponent here. It comes out in a very large arc over our head, big enough so that we can see underneath our left fist, okay? And then as the left foot draws up sharply, we bring the shinai down into a men's strike, okay? So some key points are to make sure that we lift the shinai high enough and also that the strike is made with sharp tenuchi or a snap of the wrists and you have to cut to about a level of his chin. Okay, not too high. You certainly don't want to be cutting too high up here. Okay, so from this far distance, yeah, step into your distance and then, and then we're going to step back to kamae and back to the start, so that we can repeat it. Okay, so from here, step in, raise and push the right foot forward, and as the left foot comes up, men! And we're gonna strike men, and say men at the same time, okay? Making sure to swing the shinai in a straight line without letting it, letting it go diagonal, and a swift strike onto the men from here. Yo! Men! Yo! Men! Okay, like this. Are you considering a trip to Japan to further your pursuit of Kendo? How would you like to enjoy the experience of practicing at the beautiful Shubukan, home of the Fukuoka University of Education Kendo Club? Here, you can enjoy practice with some of the country's top Kendo practitioners under the watchful eye of some of the world's most famous English-speaking teachers. 
including acclaimed author Sotaro Honda Sensei and Masatake Sumi Sensei, all in this beautiful and historic Kendojo. Whether you wish to make a single visit or stay for an extended period, you'll be welcomed in your pursuit of Kendo and given the opportunity to develop your understanding at one of the most famous Kendojos in the world. Further, you can easily travel to other areas of Fukuoka and Kyushu, and it's easy to travel to many of the city's famous sightseeing and shopping spots. If you too would like to benefit from the wonderful opportunity of practicing at this beautiful dojo with some of the strongest and friendliest kendoka on the planet, then get in touch now to find out more. So the next kind of menuti that we're going to look at is again a large swing of the shinai, but this time we're going to use fumikomiyashi, okay, or stamping footwork. This is much more difficult than doing so with suriyashi, but it's very, very important for the development of your kendo, and it comes into uh, much more relevance as your kendo pro progresses. So we're going to start at the same distance as we started before, okay, from this far distance, this toma, okay, and again, we're going to push from our left leg, and step into our isoku ito no mai again, okay? So this time, instead of using suriyashi to get over there to him, we're gonna use our left leg, okay? And we're gonna push forward from the left leg and we're gonna leap over there and stamp as we hit, okay? And stamp like this, okay? As we raise the shinai up over our head and stamp like this, okay? And the very important point is that this stamp and the shinai impact at the same time, okay? We should try and time them together, yeah? Together, like this, and not like this, or like this, yeah? Like this, yeah? Together, man, okay? At the same time. So from here, we're gonna step in, Raise the shinai in a large arc, leap forward and stamp, and after the hit, I'm gonna continue with suriyashi and pass through, past them very, very quickly, okay? So from here, man! Okay, I went off the camera there a little bit, but the key point is to pass through as quickly as you can, okay? Also, something you must also try and bear in mind is after you've stepped into your isoku ito no mai here, and this is a very difficult point, is you must try not to move this left leg, okay? From here, we swing the shinai and hit without moving this left leg. We don't get to here and then move the left leg to make it easier to hit, okay? From here, step into here and then without moving this leg, man, like this, okay? Very difficult to do. So from here, yup! Man! Yup! Man! Like so. So the next kind of menuchi we're going to look at is a slightly more advanced version of the previous one, except this time, instead of using a large swing of the shinai, we're going to use a small movement, okay? So it's a small, fast men, okay? Very much as before, we start from the far distance and we step into our distance, and this time, as we leap forward, we're not going to bring the shinai up over our heads, instead, Pushing from the left leg again, we're going to leap forward and strike with a small action of the shinai, okay? Now, what the arms should be doing, we want to lift it, lift the shinai so that the kensen, the tip, is slightly above his head this way, okay? But you must not bring it backwards, okay? Do not think about bringing it backwards. You must stay forwards like this. And then as we get to here, we're going to bring it down sharply 
And as before, as with the large strike, we're going to bring it down to a level of his chin so that we still get a nice, solid strike. Okay? Very, very important is, again, that the hands and feet are timed together. Yeah? Not like this or like this. Okay? Together. Okay? At the same time. Like this. Okay? So, from the far distance, yup! Step in and pushing forward. Man! Okay? Without making a huge swing of the shinai. As well as timing the hands and feet together, it's a good idea to think about carrying your body weight with your feet, okay? I like to think about moving the feet before I move the hands. Because this is a small technique, it's very easy to think about just hitting as fast as we can. And this leads to very bad habits, such as the hands moving first, like this, this kind of strike. Like this, a very weak way of striking men, okay? It may be very quick, like this, often see it, but it's not an effective way, okay? The biggest, most important thing is that you strike with kikentai no ichi, okay? Solid strike with the hands and feet tied together, left foot coming up quickly, and then passing through as quickly as you can, okay? That's what is important, not getting from this point to this point as quickly as you can. That will come with practice and time, okay? Yup! Man! Like so. So there we have a quick overview of how to attack Menuchi, or the strike to the head in Kendall. I hope it's been a beneficial video and that you've enjoyed it. Of course, it's only the basis of my own experience and my opinion. So if your sensei or your teacher says something different, please do follow their advice. The Kendo Show is a free service that's brought to you thanks to sponsorship from Kendo Star. Kendo Star is a brand new internet-based Kendo shop. It's got fantastic products that are shipped internationally free of charge. Get over to kendostar.com next time you're looking for something for your equipment needs, and you'll also be supporting the Kendo Show. Further, we're also supported through our Patreon fund. You can go to patreon.com slash the Kendo Show to help us bring you more episodes at a higher quality on a more frequent basis. Thank you very much for watching, and we're looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. Since becoming a Kendoga professional, it has been my dream to encourage the development of Kendo by making top quality, relevant equipment readily available to Kendoka, no matter where they are. It is a simple fact that the demographic of Kendo practitioners in Japan is somewhat different to in other countries, with most Japanese practitioners beginning Kendo as small children, and many of them losing interest when they reach adulthood the vast majority of active kendoka in Japan are under the age of 21. With this in mind, domestic budoka companies develop their products to best suit the needs of these young competitors. Armour is basically becoming lighter with a strong focus on success in competition, even at the stake of adequate protection or even durability. More so than in years past, kendoka is becoming considered a disposable item. With the continual growth of Kendo as an international activity, many Japanese companies have set up divisions and websites to serve customers abroad. Sadly, they often do not appreciate the differences between the requirements of international and domestic customers, or they simply ignore them and continue to sell the very same products internationally as they are selling in Japan. It cannot be denied that Japanese Kendo craftsmanship is universally famous and it's a reputation well deserved. However, the current trend in Japan of low cost, lightweight, disposable bogu is not well suited to the needs of kendoka overseas. 
I had an idea. What if I were to design and produce a series of Kendorgu designed exactly for people like me? People who started Kendo overseas and had faced the problems that come with that. What if I were to produce a set of armour specifically for people who want a good quality set that they can use for any type of encounter? Shiai, training, motodachi, all of these would be possible. And even better, it would be made from top quality materials by expert craftsmen. So it would be built to last. It could be used by beginners and advanced practitioners alike. And it would be all delivered with a premium level of service that is unrivaled in the industry. I got straight to work and I decided to take my experience in the field and work together with some of Japan's top craftsmen to develop the world's first brand of kendogu that brings elite Japanese craftsmanship and the specific needs of the international market together into one perfect series of bespoke kendo armour. My name is Andy Fisher and this is my dream. This is Kendo Star.